So I posted a question on Facebook, hoping that people would be honest and just answer the damn question. But of course, <laughs> no, that doesn't happen. People have to make up bullshit to fit their agenda. Question first. If the media never told you about COVID, would you have noticed at all? Answer honestly. So, we have. I would have noticed all the idiots with masks on pretending to be doctors, I guess. <laughs> to which I said, I just got to laugh. That hit me funny. It's the common cold virus. I was bashed for saying so back in March. The stupids had already begun their takeover. They thought they were ahead of the curve. They all wanted to be first to post something. True, false, lies. They just wanted first. I just wanted honesty. We have Gary Johnson who says, I think we'd all be looking back and saying that it was a pretty bad flu season we just had. To which I said, actually, this, this is a less than the usual flu season. Matt Lacoco. Matt says, yes, considering ICUs in many hospitals reach capacity in April and my friend is still recovering from it having been hospitalized for a month. He's in physical therapy and speech therapy and was in fine health before the virus. And then I said, not true, Matt. You should read the actual stats and not just what the media puts out. They absolutely lied on this. It has been proven repeatedly check another friend's uh, post on that topic and check the post by Ron Paul as well as other Texas doctors. It's simply a lie. The hospitals, the ICUs have not been overrun. But Matt wants to continue with his bullshit, so whatever. He can't answer the question because he can't go there. My friend Shadowhawk says, thank you, Anne, for stating the truth, something the media has forgotten to do. And that reminds me, you and I both recall the time when the MSM had to tell the truth. When we know this was changed in the late 90s. Most of these kids think the news is the truth. We know it is opposite truth anymore. <clears throat> and then my pal, Rob Morrow. Thanks, Rob. Yes, because of Twitter. <laughs> of course, nobody would be tweeting it. And Rob's a smart ass because that's what he is. That's what he does. But I did ask, can I collect some cuckoo money for and be called brave because I had a cold and I survived it? Maybe not. My friend Raja says, not necessarily. Yeah, I hope not. If the world around you is not dead and dying or even sick, I would hope you wouldn't think we're in the midst of a pandemic or an epidemic. But people cannot think for themselves anymore. My friend Sammy, who I really like, answers with, people have died. Many, many people have died in a very short period of time. Whether you label the pandemic COVID or a horrible plague, many people have died over a very short time. And so I said to Sammy, and I love him, but I said to him, you need to look at how hospitals and clinics and doctors have been advised to label cases of death. In fact, according to the numbers put up, even if all labeled as dead with COVID are accurate, compared to the past few years of cold and flu seasons and deaths worldwide over the past few years are down. It's not by a lot, but the numbers are lower, especially compared to the uh, same months in 2018. Sorry, but this has been a low death year comparatively. For this reason, I ask the question again. If you'd not been told we were in the middle of a pandemic, what would you think this, based on what you've seen health-wise of your friends, family, and community? Would the amount of illness of the same sort of symptoms, same symptoms cause you to think pandemic, even epidemic, would it? That's the question. I hardly think anyone being honest with himself would ever go there. Another friend says, I haven't known of any of them. My friend Sammy says, let's just leave it there. I do not agree with you. I don't want to fight. My honest response does not agree with yours. Let's leave it at that. If you wish to believe there's no pandemic, you're welcome to believe that. That's not the question. You asked for an honest response, and that's what I provided. He didn't, because he didn't really answer the question. And he said, your opinion is your own. I won't challenge that. I please don't expect you to challenge mine. And then Sammy says to another friend, all it takes is one. Hmm. Okay, whatever. It doesn't take just one to make a pandemic. Ah, my friend Lucy 
says, I would never have known, just like I didn't know 2018, 2019, 80,000 people died from the flu. To which I said, I know when I have the flu and I can generally figure out why I had the flu or a cold or anything else that comes during along during the fall and winter especially, and even early spring. I don't see people just dropping of illness. I haven't seen that even once. And I do live in the middle of a big medical center in the capital of the state of Texas. So if it was that bad, would we not know about it? I have seen hospitals, clinics, doctors' offices all shuttered, closed down. Nurses are furloughed, as are doctors. The parking areas, garages for these places are mostly empty of cars. If so many were sick, the hospitals would be overrun and doctors would be haggard and nurses would be exhausted and not on TikTok learning new dance moves. If any of this tr was true, it would look like a freaking illness, even epidemic, never mind pandemic. And another person, Stephen, says, my roommate's co-worker's dad died. <laughs> my roommate's co-worker's dad died last month. And we got our first confirmed case at work. Another co-worker that works in the same area as the person we believe got it had a stroke three days ago. We're not sure if it's related. Because now COVID makes you have strokes. Holy crap. If anything, I would say my job is why I can't really ignore it. And so I said, what else did he have aside from a virus? I really want to know. By the way, that's not the question. If your friend or his or her dad died from a stroke, would you say the person died from the common cold? Really? Read the question and answer it honestly or not at all. He says, it's not a common cold though. Common colds don't cause pneumonia. And no, I just said we really aren't saying it's related. Just odd that a guy that works right next to the guy that got it gets a stroke. And yes, that's how old people die. That's got something they are already dealing with and then the small hiccup comes that for some reason causes a lot more trouble than usual and bam funeral <laughs> yeah the dude was an old guy who had diabetes I believe he was just fine last we were updated mm. and another friend Matt says common cold does kill elderly and immunocompromised and then Stephen says true this seems to be more effective though and so I said, only when treated with intubation and ventilation, Stephen, that is a killer. And this has been proven to be a terrible killer this year. By the way, if it was a common cold bug, as I've said from the start, why does a CV viral test show positive for those who've had a cold? This according to the CDC. If you had a cold, you may test positive for coronavirus. Why has CDC finally started comparing the two? I did it all along. Now, WHO says CDC is terribly wrong, but they weren't wrong before this. Come on. And so, uh, uh, Stephen says, I'd assume because coronavirus is part of what the strains are lumped together in the common cold. Dude, it's a virus. This is what a bug is. It doesn't mean they pose the same threat to people. Your insistence that it isn't anything beyond common cold is introducing nothing of significance to the current situation. Okay, it's a common cold. People are getting pneumonia from it and dying faster than usual. And we're the worst developed country in, in <laughs> mitigating it. What gives? So what I said is why don't you listen or watch some video or read some writings from Dr. Judy Mikovits. The virus has still not been isolated. If you knew what they did to pretend this is what they say it is, I think you would be sickened by it. Dr. Judy Mikovits was a top virologist working with Fauci, in fact, until she started to call him out for fraud. She was then attacked, even taken to jail with no charges, and threatened for her honesty. There is a lot more to this scam, and it is a scam, than most would want to believe. Yet so many believe what the MSM says because why? Do you know why they are, or excuse me, do you know that they are by law allowed to lie to us now? Used to be they were not, and there was a fairness in broadcasting doctrine. That ended just before 9-11 of 01. But keep believing it is honest truth. It's not. If you believe this or anything else just because you heard on the television, please don't bother with me with anything. None of this makes a bit of sense. Use reason in your responses or just don't respond. Another friend says, now let's be positive. Had it not been for the media mask and, and CV mania, 
Would you have noticed how many people are stupid? <laughs> Which I said, this is also true. I would not know how many people I dislike for being gullible. I really did not know how many unintelligent people I knew before all this mess. <laughs> and my friend says, Rand says, I tell myself that maybe I should be tolerant, but I fail. And I'm glad I do. I have managed to convince several people to not wear them. One of them, a doctor. People are so afraid of standing out as being different, although what it is great in life is how unique and different from each other we all are. What is this culture that requires people to conform? To which I said, same here. I truly don't want to be mean. I don't want to feel I'm yelling at people, and particularly due to the ugliness I fall prey to, I do not want to shame anyone. But my goodness, really, enough is enough. When will these people with far too much time on their hands as it is finally read what I've researched for them? Why? When they know the news liars lie all the time on every other topic, why should they believe the stupid story? There's no evidence that has been posted honestly to bolster their arguments, but still they believe it. Why? I mean, I know why, but come on. And my friend says, people are taught to be afraid of truly being themselves. They need external approval. Herd mentality, yes. And though most say they will not trust or don't trust the government, particularly Trump, Trump's White House, they are sucking down and lapping up every bit of this coroni baloney story like it's mother's milk. I want to ask, why do you go along with this government when you say you hate the Donald and say nothing but the most wretched things about him. Maybe that's how we get people to start figuring it out. Another friend, Christopher, says, Yeah, well, I would have known because my parents are in healthcare and listen to the CDC guidelines. The CDC saved us from Ebola <laughs> a few years back. <laughs> so crazy. And several other dangerous outbreaks. It is unwise to ignore hard data especially when it's all going to result in the deaths of 130,000 people so far. CDC isn't a massive agency run by hundreds of thousands of scientists who choose to conspire to control the world. <laughs> to which I said, do you think CDC guidelines are much different before the media and government push that anti-social distancing and face coverings and anything else than the usual hand washing than any other cold and flu season? I read, their I read their information rather all the time, and I was already subscribed to their emails before this big lie. They have reacted to the news and to the government and not the other way around. By the way, have you read the CDC lately? Most who know it is not a pandemic of any epi <coughs> Most who have, excuse me, know it is not a pandemic of any epidemic proportions. The CDC has absolutely reacted to the mass insanity and not the other way around. Christopher says the CDC has its res had its resources massively slashed by big government posing as money saving small government. It did not have the resources or leadership to respond properly. There's been more deaths from uh, than World War One. Oh, there's been more deaths than from World War One right now from CV. But to be honest, when this first hit, I thought it was just going to be like the flu, which is bad. I blame the lack of leadership in the White House for the so many deaths. They just make up bullshit conspiracies for everyone as they expand their power grab and control beyond the Constitution. I can only imagine how Ebola would have spread had the CDC not been as well funded in 2014. To which I say, I laugh and I say, come on, isn't that the one the doctors call the swindle flu? <laughs> oh, Nigel says, yes, I tested positive and I was very ill for a month. As was my mother, brother, partner, daughter, who all tested positive and were ill to varying degrees. And I said, I had a cold too. It was a bad cold. I went to bed for a couple of days. I'd love to know what sort of test you had that gave you all positive results. According to the CDC and, the and WHO, these tests are quite inaccurate. And if you had any cold bug recently, you would probably, they say, test positive. Answer the question and be honest. Would you even have thought pandemic because you got sick? Seriously. Or did you catch the pandemic due to fear? Fear will produce, produce exosomes in abundance and look exactly like what they're calling a virus. And this is according to a top virologist. And someone else, Kay, says to Nigel, what? And you survived? 
And K also says 80% false positives. And I said, now K, don't be mean. Many people are sure they had this virus. Thing is, there's no way to know because their tests are, yes, 80% and some even more inaccurate. But don't laugh at or shame people. I have been, I have people trying to do that to me in my neighborhood. Of course, there are people who won't read the science or any of this trying to shame someone who reads it all. And Nigel says to Kay, actually was tested positive twice, but you've done your research on www.tinfoilhat.com. <laughs> Me coughing up blood, not being able to breathe, having a temperature of 103 and losing any sense of taste and smell were all figments of my imagination. Are you sure you didn't have it? With a hairstyle and dress sense like yours, you definitely have no sense for taste, for sure. Now, I actually think Nigel probably had tuberculosis. It sure sounds like TB, coughing up lead, not being able to breathe, having a temperature of 103, and losing a sense of taste and smell. That sure sounds like tuberculosis. Hate to say it, Nigel, but I'm going to have to message you on that one. So someone else says, Alexander says, nope. Yet again, the media lies and people still believe the lies that are being told to them. A friend Colin says, yes, friend's friend is in the hospital and his fiance died. 30s. So I said, not the question. If the news wasn't constantly telling you of this pandemic, would you think it existed? Would the number of sick, dying, dead be enough to convince you? Answer the question and please be honest. He says, of course, if there was no media to disseminate the information, there would be a much higher likelihood we wouldn't be aware of the full extent of the pandemic. <sighs> to which I say, here's the question. Without being told this is an illness of epidemic proportions, which has crossed country boundaries, making it a pandemic, would the amount of illness and death around you cause you to know this was a thing? Would you think everyone was sick without seeing sick people? I think you're refusing to answer the question and answer it because you are afraid to admit the lies are so huge. Please read and answer honestly or not at all. To which Colin says, well, maybe not. It would all depend on who got sick and died around me. I don't believe it's a bad thing to be aware. That's the most honest answer I can give you. And to which I said, well, who has gotten sick and died around you? Anyone? That is the question. If your neighbors and friends are not sick and dying, as is the case for almost everyone, you would think nothing was going on because that's the truth. And then I say it because I'm irritated. It really is like pulling teeth. And Kay says, no more, no less than any other cool, cold or flu season. Each individual takes responsibility for their health and hygiene. That's why I say it isn't about this so-called virus or flu. It's about massive government takeover, power grab and control. And which I say exactly, Kay. If they presented this as every other cold and flu season, life would be normal. But this is not about illness or death. It's why I've been sure since the beginning of this, it was and is the economy. Everything is beginning to crash. We're in it for a real hell. Or we are in for real hell any day now. Not that we're not already there. And my friend Linda says, absolutely not. Katie says, I would have because my friend died of it and I have family in the hospital fighting for the lives from it right now. I say, come on, Katie. Question is, would you have jumped to this being a pandemic or epidemic had they not programmed this belief into you? If one friend dying is certainly sad, but, and this is the point, if you lose one friend to sickness, do you automatically believe the whole world is dying from it? Really? Because I hope that's not your answer. People die. Most do not die from a cold virus. Then again, most are not intubated during, due to having a cold. This is the first year we've seen any such thing take place. If you ask me, the government in directing doctors and hospitals to intubate people as the only course of action are the true murderers in this. And the vast majority of these politicians are not in medicine or were not till this year when they all became experts in science and medicine. And then she says, I'm just answering your question. There's a reality for people, even if it's not for you. She won't answer the question. She can't answer it because it just really bothers her to answer it. And then we have Hashem Talawi. I used to like Hashem. I'm going to have to probably cut him off after this. He says, yes, I would, because I know people who died from it, people who suffered, and we don't even know what the mental damages will be. Why would you even ask such a question? 
Do you have to get it, Anne, before you believe in it? Do you believe in God? I said, Hashem, reread the question and answer it honestly. Uh, Hashem says, I did, and my answer is still, I would have noticed it, all the bodies and all the people in the hospitals. If the media never said COVID-19 and Corona, we will be wondering what's killing people. I don't understand why you asked me to reread it. Believe it or not, I can read English. And I say, Hashem, I realize you speak and read English but you are practicing avoidance rather than responding to the question. I did not ask if you knew someone who died in the past few months. I asked if you did not hear of this pandemic from the media or their sister sources and based solely on what you have seen around you, would you believe we were in the throes of an illness of epidemic proportions? Answer, honestly or not at all. Do you see people dying in larger numbers than any other year? Do you? Or is the media just reading the obituaries to you? And I'm sorry, but the death of a person in his or her 80s or 90s is hardly a tragedy. It's life. My own parents died not so long back, and I'm glad they did not have to survive to see this lunacy. Another friend, Steve, says, no, people have been affected and passed away, but this thing has been blown way out of proportion. This is a power grab planned by the powers that be. Let them try it in Texas. And sadly, I respond, go to downtown Austin. They have tried it in Texas. They are succeeding. I think it's mostly because we have now too many Californians here destroying our city and state. But, you know, that's another thing. My friend George says, hi, Ann, that's a very good question. And George is a doctor. I think the answer is no. I think all I would have seen is the flu season to be forgetting this nasty flu. Or lately people being been getting this nasty cold and that's about it. Just like in years in the past when some sort of virus would go around and people are getting it, whether it was a one day stomach bug or something else. How it's happened before when this sudden same some little cold or flu or something that would pass through would be more prevalent in some years than in other years, but nothing more than that. And I say that's this year and what they're calling CV is not as bad as cold and flu season from any other recent year. And since everything is labeled CD, CV, nobody has been sick from cold or flu in many months. <laughs> By the way, George, I had a very bad cold this year. I was sick for about 10 days. I was miserable. But I didn't feel the need to call my doctor. I went to bed for a couple of days, up the peppers, the hot peppers, and liquid intake, used eye drops, nose drops for comfort. I found the eye drops really do add to it, and I got well. I did not have people over, and I did not go out at all. I was sick. I treated myself as a person who was sick. I wish others would do the same. Then nobody would need as if a mask at all. George says, I understand. And how's Texas? News said they're having a COVID resurgence. I said, no, George, Texas is suffering under the delusion of CV resurgence. Those who believe in it simply don't leave the house. If they did, they would see what a lie it is. Yak Meninoff. <laughs> yeah, that's who it is, says. Yak says, does this survey include victims of COVID? And I said, please read the question, consider the question, then answer it. If you think, based on so many people near you dropping dead from the CV, would you know this without the constant prodding by the news media was happening? Then answer yes. If you don't see illness and death, I would think your answer would have to be a resounding no, right? And Yak says, I don't frequent morgues or cemeteries. I don't know why he says this. Not yet, at least. But I have friends and relatives working 16-hour shifts in hospitals, both locally and in Florida, all reporting they are beyond capacity to deal with the pandemic. I said, yuck, I think you need to try to answer the question. As far as deaths, the numbers are so low, the CDC is, hard, is saying it hardly is epidemic, never mind pandemic, but that's not the question. Read the question and answer honestly. And then I say also, you would not have to visit morgues to know if your neighbors and family members and people in your town, such as shopkeepers, were all falling over sick and dying. I am asking if, based on what is happening in your town today, and all of these past four months, nobody said there's a pandemic on, would you have ever thought this is the case? What language do you speak? I'm happy to translate the question for you. 
so you better understand this. And I am not saying this to be mean. So Yak says, pandemic no, epidemic yes. <laughs> ah, to which I just have to laugh. And her friend Alex says, um, yeah, I think we would have noticed people dying quicker than they are now. And I said, are they dying quicker? Were they? Who in your neighborhood died? Who at your church or from your choir or your favorite club music venue died? Did you lose some family members to this? We would have noticed it if it happened. It did not happen, so why would we think there's a pandemic or epidemic on hand at the door ready to kill us all? This is my question. Would anyone with any sense think we're in the middle of a pandemic based on what is happening around him or her? Alex says, I mean, several people in the thread have said they know people close to them who had it. It's not just you're disregarding all these people. I mean, my parents work in hospitals and see the patients. This is happening everywhere around the world. China had to build hospitals, <laughs> which they never fill, by the way, uh, to house the amount of patients who kept failing, falling ill of it. We, among other countries, had a warning by witnessing China and Italy go through it. Ooh, Italy, tuberculosis. So we wouldn't have fallen in the same hole. So yes, if if weren't mandated to have stayed inside when everything shut down, I firmly believe we would have a similar result if we weren't shown anything. <sighs> and then he says, I'm curious to hear what needs to happen for you to believe the severity of the situation. I say, Alex, a few people have said, I know a person who died. And two people have said, I know a few who've had it. And the question is, if you were not told by the media that we were in the middle of a pandemic or epidemic or illness of epidemic proportion, would you believe we were? Knowing of or directly a few people who've been sick with nonspecific symptoms does not cause a person to automatically jump to the notion that the whole world is sick from it. I think you are again being a distraction. You are not considering the question, as all of the apologists for the media and G-men government have done for four months. Obviously, were this a pandemic illness, you would be seeing people dying all around you, and not just sort of know of one or two with a flipping cold. Ira says, I would have noticed a government reaction. I said to Ira, really? The question pertains to what's going on around you. Are people dropping like proverbial flies all over being sick? with the same sort of illness, are they? If so, yes. If not, well. And he says, no, but there's a small matter of virtual house arrest, om omnipresent signage, and the shutting of practically everything except supermarkets. Ian? Uh, but if not hyped by the media, there's no way the government could have done any of this. I am thinking, were it not spread by the media, there would have been no spread of fear. And then the government would have been told to F off with their insane lockdown. That's what I mean. And Ian says, I agree with that. A compliant media is a prerequisite for deception and tyranny. And to, I, to Ian Jenkins, I say, that is the point of the question. Thank you. Then my friend Pamela, who I love, but she makes me crazy sometimes, says, young father in my grandkids' class caught it from his wife and died. She recovered. My daughter's co-worker has it now. It's always somebody, something else, and connection here and there and the other. Anyway, so I say, question is, would you have noticed we were living through a pandemic? If the screaming media was not yammering on about CV, would you have noticed we're in a pandemic? Please just answer the question. And Pamela says, I wouldn't know the stats for sure, but on the other hand, I don't know the mortality rate of flu either. Why do people believe flu mortality rates and not CV? If one source is one source better than the other, I've personally not known anyone who died from flu, so anecdotal references aren't reliable. Here's the thing, live and let live. If you think a mask is useful, wear it. If not, don't. I don't see a problem either way. And I say, Pamela, that's not the point. The point is this, without being told that everyone's sick around you and that your health is threatened because there are, all, there are so many sick and contagious people around you, would you have thought everyone was sick? Would you have thought anyone was sick? Would you have noticed that people are dying everywhere around you? Have you noticed that? Is this why you would think there was a pandemic? If there was a pandemic, would we need the media to tell us so? Or would it not be obvious? That is the question. And she finally says, probably wouldn't. Only know about three households in my hood. If they all drop dead, I'd be suspicious. So <laughs> I would hope so. 
Ah, I say Pamela. If only one person per ho per those three households died, you would be right to suspect something. But did this happen? She says, I don't know. I haven't seen any of them, but no hearses either. Like one more time, based on what you have been seeing around you and based solely on this, what you see, not what you are told, would you think there's an epidemic of illness going on? I would not expect anyone to think pandemic without hearing something from somewhere. But based solely on what is happening in your community, is this a disease of epidemic proportions? Please just answer honestly. I'm going to save the next one for last. <laughs> a friend Vanessa says, Duterbug. I don't think I would have. Which <laughs> I love. Duterbug. Never heard that. Pretty funny though. And Vanessa says, I'll reserve that one just for you. Okay. Kay says, don't believe anything that MSM says. You know you can't because they're lying. They are talking. Uh, I say anything they say anymore can be made of whole cloth, meaning there's not a threat of factual evidence to prove their stories. This is what has me so very angry over this. And then my friend Ruth, I don't know, Ruth wants to pray for everyone no matter what. Matt says, I noticed. I said, damn, here's another patient that looks like the flu, but tested negative. Probably since December, I'd say like 100 times over this last flu season, officially knowing about COVID. Otherwise, no, I wouldn't have noticed. Evan says... Def hit the stages long before China. Oh, definitely hit the states. Oh, the states, not the stages. Definitely hit the states long before China even knew what was going on. Hmm. Sean says, not at all. I said, it's making me crazy, Sean. Kareem says, five-year-olds know this world full of N-words, ninjas. <laughs> I'm like, I'm what? Not sure what that means, but it's funny. And Kareem says, that's all funny, no point, LOL. Uh, Cena says, no. Uh, John Hutchison, no. Thanks, John. Which, which, I wish everyone would be so honest and decisive. Joshua says, no. Brad Murphy, no. Thanks, Brad. Uh, J uh, Jay says, no. Thanks for your honesty. No, no, nope. Texas set a record for COVID deaths in a single day today. That's Brandon. I said, oh, come on. That is so wrong. Texas set the record for a number of cases because they kicked off their contact tracing and started filling out those suspected COVID, presumed CV, presumed positive cases. Do you even know what, that, what they did? They took each case of people phoning in the hospital and clinic, remember, and they put up signs. If you feel sick, don't come into the emergency room. Go to your car and call us. And then they phoned these people back to, see, to confirm they had actually called to say they were sick. So, sick or not, feeling a bit off or having a cough or a sniffle or not, each of these people was labeled a case. Then they asked the same cases who they'd been in contact with for two weeks prior to being sick or not, and two weeks after being sick or not. Each and every person they had contact with them labeled a case. And if they had phone numbers for these other contacts, or, or the contact info, rather, for these people, they would contacted them to find out if they'd been sick. If they had a test, which is a faulty test anyway, for the COOF. If not, and if said person did not wish to be tested, he or she was then labeled a positive COOF case. Either way, more cases. Then they, then they extrapolated the number by calling the people the original person had been in contact with and on and on and on. This is where the huge number came from. And all of these people who died, of all these people who died, just about nobody. And really, be honest. Answer the question honestly, not with a bunch of hogwash about deaths that did not take place. I mean, lies and part truths bother me more than anything. And then I said, I suppose I have to go for my walk around the medical center and shoot video so some who've been commenting will see what the world, and especially a medical center, looks like. I think most don't really know what it is or what's going on out of doors. Even those who would jump in the car and watch the road as they travel, they don't really know. Please consider, read the question, consider the answer. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm not trying to prove I'm smarter. I just want your honest responses. And my friend Kevin says, thank you. And Ellen says, there's a definite difference between a pandemic and an epidemic. Uh, I don't think Ellen gets it at all. With so many deaths and positive cases, 
I wonder why this was never an epidemic. Um, oh, geez. Ellen doesn't understand. <laughs> Jonathan says, maybe not till now. That's damn good. The media told us about it. Uh, so I say, yeah. Oh, Jonathan says, there will always be those conspiracists. Conspiracists. That's what he says. Ah, so I answer, oh, so your neighborhood is full of sick and dying people? However are you coping? Those who see sickness and death everywhere would be the ones making up shit. And Brandon says, cite your sources. I'm like, my sources? I think you mean senses. I would say, my eyes, which have not seen people falling over dead, and my ears, which have not heard people crying out for help from their death throes, and my nose, as I do not detect the scent of death all around me, and my brain, because I can piece all this together and, not, and realize not a word from the media is able to be validated. Not a word. And then I say, well, I put up something about masks. And I say, dear friends, if you cannot bring yourself to answer the question, honestly, please don't answer the question. But please do think about it. Uh, Brandon says, yeah, I've lost a few friends to it. To which I say, and you would have thought pandemic? Please be honest. What other ailments did your friends have? People may be dying, as they do every year but not from or of CV. The media and the CDC say they are dying with presumptive cases of CV. But, and this is a big deal, they have not and are not saying dead from confirmed case of CV-19. This is not in their lexicon. Please consider the question carefully and then answer honestly. Two deaths does not a pandemic make. Even if it is sad that you had two or a few friends die. They died? Few? How many is that? And then he says, I've had two that caught COVID and died from it alone. You're in denial. Good luck. <laughs> uh, and then he says, I pretty much realized it was a serious pandemic when they started stacking bodies. This is hilarious. In refrigerated trucks in New York City. Of course, the video footage could have been faked, right? And I say, do you know how many people age 66 and up died in New York City? It was what was termed decades back as ventilator assault. <clears throat> I was a nursing assistant from the time I was 15 till in my early 20s. I knew a ventilator assault. I knew as a teen that if a patient was sent to the hospital and intubated and ventilated, they were going to die. That was a. That was what we knew. So when they said that we'd be doing this to people with CV, I said to my doctor and my physical therapist, they're going to kill these people. And about 98% of these tu those tubed and vented were killed. Also in New York City and in all of the North and Northeast, most people are not buried in the winter. I'm from Connecticut and I know it costs an extra 4000 to dig the hole to bury the person in the winter. The ground is frozen. When my grandmother died in the winter of 92, my dad paid the extra cash to have her buried immediately. So all the morgues do freeze the bodies until the frost is gone. It is hardly unusual to see or to know of freezer trucks, trucks rather full of stacked bodies in New York City. Most funeral homes and morgues are far too small to keep the bodies in their freezers. You really should do some investigation into these things rather than just popping off with something you heard on the TV. I know these things, so you're hardly going to trick me with these silly statements. Like I said, I worked with the elderly and disabled for about seven years, and then again later in life I did the same. I know what I'm talking about, but do yourself a favor. Look it up. Uh, my friend Dave says, No, but I wouldn't. I would have never noticed polio, tetanus, tuberculosis, diphtheria, we can cause smallpox, hepatitis, and many other infections and fatal diseases either. Also, if the media never told me about the mega quake and tsunami in Japan in 2011, I wouldn't have noticed that either. And I said, you wouldn't notice all these things in the throes of epidemic proportions? Do you not go outside? Do you not know your neighbors, even by sight? A tsunami or a quake affects one part of the world. A pandemic is said to affect the whole world. Your neighborhood should be terribly sick. Your town should be losing people in large numbers. 
Your hospital and morgue should have been overflowing. Were this a deadly illness of epidemic proportions and worldwide, people would be dying. You would notice it unless you bury your head under your covers and talk with nobody. This does not seem to be the case. You're connected online, at least, and you seemingly have time to look it up, right? So why are you not seeing this? And he says, excuse me, you're jumping to conclusions with only half the story. I live in New Zealand. Out of 5 million people, we had approximately 1,500 cases. Uh, and thanks to seven plus weeks of lockdown, we're been able, we've been able to eradicate it from our community before it ever got there. Isn't that crazy? Meanwhile, the hospitals in, te- hospitals in Texas and Florida are reaching exceeding capacity, which is not true. Oh, I get so tired of people and their dumb stuff. So I said I did not jump to conclusions. In fact, the whole post is me not jumping to conclusions, but asking the questions. I asked you a lot of questions. Perhaps they were pointed questions, but I asked questions. That's not jumping to conclusions. Now would you please be honest in answering the question? Start with reading the question, please. He says, I did the very first word. My first reply was no, but I'm being honest as you requested. Yada, yada, yada. Oh. I said, Greg, you're not, you were not honest as you really did not answer the question. Knowing two people have died, you actually would say you knew it was a pandemic. My parents died in the past few years, just a couple of years from, uh, from one to the other. I didn't jump to the conclusion that scores of others must be dying because they died. You're saying you would jump, and for this reason, I think you're being dishonest, or you're completely programmed. And Diane says, no, but I think I had it back in January. I had a terrible cough for a month and drank bottles of Amusinex. And I said, Diane, I'm with you. I was also sick early January. Terrible cold. It was the worst cold I think I've ever had. I took to bed for a couple of days. But I knew I wasn't dying from it. Why? Nobody had convinced me I probably would die from it. And that psyop by the media seems to have made all the difference. Diane says, I agree. Way too busy to die just yet. <laughs> Jay says yes, because I had several employees get it. Some got really sick and others not so bad. And I said, Jay, I think you're not paying attention to the question. Are there so many people in your area, your neighborhood, your town, your community falling sick, losing their lives from the same illness to the degree in which you cannot help but see it everywhere? If this is the case, I can imagine you would think some horrible illness has taken over and people are dying, and it's a horrific thing. But if this is not the case, if your neighbors are not all sick, with half of them dying, and your town's mayor and the police and a good number of council members are not dead from the same sort of illness with the same symptoms, how can you even think it would be a pandemic or even epidemic proportions? Please consider the question honestly rather than popping off with a few anecdotal cases. You know a few who got sick. Okay, who? Did they die? Were they put in ICU and intubated and ventilated? Probably not if they survived it. That's the question. Because if this was a pandemic, we should expect to see an epidemic of serious illness with the same symptoms as this will identify it as an illness that can be quantified as well as an epidemic of death. Our morgues should be overflowing around the country where so many people sick and there's such a deadly plague. And Dixie says, just like H1N1, and I say very much so. Uh, uh, Hillrose says, if the media harped on the crimes of Israel 24-7, we would see some action finally. The sheep will get upset when the media tells them to be. And I said, see, right on. How I wish they would come up with a new tune as this one is not only dumb, but it's old. So that's it. That's where we are, Deuterbug. <laughs> there might be more answers, but I'm about done. Have a great day.